Greetings fellow Demon Slayers, this is Taiman and Mari here today with our first League of Maidens video. So, all I gotta say is poor game, I feel so bad for this game and for the devs. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen like, the Steam reviews and some of the crazy stuff that people are saying. Like this one guy saying the game is a Bitcoin miner and that his, his CPU was running at almost 200 degrees. Like, I'm sorry dude, like... My CPU is super cool right now, so is my GPU. You might have a potato computer. The game is not doing anything extra. People are saying the game doesn't shut down when they close it. When I close the game, it shuts right off. I don't know. But that's neither here nor there. One of the biggest complaints is the cash shop. So what I want to do today for the first video that I make for this game is just look at the cash shop and see if it's really as bad as people say. So let's get right into it. Um, here we have like the opening page. It's like whatever. I want to look more at like each thing separately, like each tab, so we can really see like what things cost and if it's really like over predatory is what, what people are calling it. Now, mind you guys, I come from Gotcha, so I'm used to the worst types of monetization. So let's see here. We'll go to outfits first. So, 1600 gems is just under $10. 2000 gems would be 10 bucks. So when I look at this, I just see a way to buy skins for $10. Now, as far as like these limited time only skins, yeah, that's a little bit like bomo -y, I guess, because, you know, you won't be able to get it after 28 days, but again, it's there for 28 days. That's a month from now. If you want the skin in that time, you'll probably end up buying it. Like, so I don't see that as a huge screw you from the devs or anything of the sort, especially in gotchas. There are some gotchas where the banners literally last just a week. So having a full month to buy something at a $10 price point... Yeah, if you didn't want it, then obviously you won't get it, but $10 over the course of a month isn't asking too much. And every other skin here, if we just kind of slink through the shop, they're not limited. They all cost the same amount, $10. There's a crap load of them, and I'm, I'm really not seeing the issue here. Now, I understand some people are, oh, look at all this stuff. They're over-monetizing. I don't think this game is meant to be something where you come in here and you buy every single thing. I think you're supposed to get, like, maybe one or two things that you want for your waifu. And, you know, over time, like, you may pick up more and play dress-up, but... Like, I only have a few skins here. Like, I got everything that I wanted for what I was trying to do. So me personally, I don't find the outfit monetization bad. I will say this, I wish there were more free outfits, because this black outfit here is what they give you, like, for free, and then if you want anything else, you have to pay. So I can agree with that complaint, like, they should have at least, I want to say three to five free outfits, so we're not all just wearing, like, this leather training suit. But that's a small complaint, seeing as the price points are really small. $10 is like a joke to me. Like, when I play Action Timing in, a, a limited skin there is 35 bucks. So, if you buy 35 bucks worth of gems here, you're literally going to be able to get yourself three skins and probably something else. So, moving on to weapon skins. Weapon skins are actually a little bit cheaper. They cost 800 gems apiece. So they're roughly about five bucks. Again, they're weapon skins. They don't give any stats. They don't do anything but look cool. So I don't see the major issue. This game isn't trying to sell you any means of like power. There's no gotcha system if you want something. Like if I wanted Lotus Katana, I just simply click Lotus Katana, spend 800 gems and get it. Yeah, it's a premium only item, but it's 800 gems, who cares? Like, it's 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 just five bucks. You get the item, you're done. There's no gotcha pull, there's no rolling, and it's like, eh. 
that's what I hate about like monetization these days is everything's loot box locked or gotcha locked and you have to roll 200 times to have a chance of really getting what you want. This game removes that problem. I don't see how this game is getting all the flack in the world when League of Legends literally does the same thing. They just charge you a flat amount, you get the item, and you go about your day. So next we look at shields. Shields are actually half of the cost of a weapon, so these are literally like less than $5. And again, they're just shield glamours. There's only six of them right now. And personally, I really like this Gorgon shield. I might have to get that. That's super good. But like, I don't know, guys. I could sit here and talk until I'm blue in the face, but I'm not seeing the issues. Another issue is the races so they start you with what I guess this is like supposed to be a human I don't know and then we have this weird beast looking race and then outside of that you get this race for free which it just seems to be like a, a darker skin human template now we have like all these other races here like we have this these furry looking races like I guess this is supposed to be like a panther this is supposed to be like some sort of tiger they cost 800 gems so this I can argue is a bit of a problem because the three races that we do have available aren't really super distinct from each other save for this one because it has like some like kind of clay on looking features from Star Trek it looks a bit alien but outside of this you can't really make yourself a furry without paying so I can agree like for anyone who's a furry con here that that kind of blows you're gonna have to like shell out to get this sort of look but outside of the races being a little bit like scummy I, I still don't really have that much of an issue with it because if someone wants it they're they'll just spend five dollars and get the race in ESO getting a race outside of ESO plus is is way more money than this so it's like a lot of things at a small price point and I can't be mad at that because there's no RNG involved. You can literally cherry pick what you want. So, I, I believe I said this already, but coming into this game, like, if I came into the League of Maidens, I wouldn't want to, like, buy all of these. I would just go, oh, I like this tiger skin, let's get her. And then that would be the race I play. Or, I, I mean, I'd probably go towards this more, in, in, all, in all honesty, because I like the obsidian skin, but... It's really just pick what you want, man. Like, that's pretty much the vibe I get from this cash shop. It's really lax. You can go ham and buy everything, but you don't really have to. Same thing here. Like, wings, just about just about $5. You can pick whatever wings you want. There's only three right now. These asset skins, I, I guess these are for people, like, around the base. Personally, I probably will never buy these so I don't really care about them that much. Like, yeah, this tank looks cooler. It's like, Tank Mark III has bigger gun than Tank Mark II, who has bigger gun than Tank Mark I. But it's not something that's, like, really catching my eye. Like, oh, man, I have to get Warship Mark III, guys. So moving on from these, and even then, they're, like, less than five bucks. But moving on. Another one is hairs. So, people were complaining that they can't get, like, the hairstyle they want. That's a bit agreeable. I feel like hair overall should have been something they didn't really monetize and just release the styles. But there are a lot of hairs in the game. A good portion of them like seem to be unlocked. So I'm not really too bothered by it, but you know, it does it does suck having to buy your hair. Another thing that I didn't like is that there's no hair slider. So when you pick a hairstyle, you literally color it and that's it. Like, I don't even think you can give the hairstyle highlights. I spent quite a bit of time in the character creator and I didn't see that option. So it's literally like you pick a color and then you go with it. So you can't have like blue and pink hair, but you can have blue or pink hair. So it's a little bit limited because you can't really slide the hair like something like... AI Shoujo or Honey Select, they have hair sliders, so you can actually make your hair do do other things besides what it's doing. Like, I could make this ponytail stand straight up in AI Shoujo if I wanted to. But outside of the limited customization options for hair, 
you get a nice decent choice of, you know, okay looking hairstyles. Like, I don't think the free ones are bad. I would never pay for this Skrillex cut. But even then, it's less than five bucks if, like, the specific hair you want is monetized. I feel for you. I, I agree that that's a little bit scummy. But it's not, like, the most scummy thing in the world. Like, you're gonna spend your less, you know, 400 gems and then you'll have your hair and go about your day. So moving on from the hairs... We have Mask. Me, personally, I'm not a huge Mask fan, so I won't really, like, go crazy even getting these. But I could see people wanting the 2B Mask. Outside of that Mask, the other ones just look like your typical everyday Mask you see in MMOs. Like, they're just okay or whatever. So, let's be real here. This Mask Shop is only 400 gems because 2B is super hot and people are just going to want to buy something to make that character ears are the same thing they're just little cosmetics like we have bunny ears I think this these are both bunny ears we have what looks to be like cat ears we have little Morgan bat wings for your head and another like version of cat ears or maybe one's fox ears who's and who knows but again there's only six things here I don't expect you to buy all of them just pick what you want same thing for tails it's the same idea as ears. You literally just pick what you want, go about your day. Eyewear as well. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed that there's not just like a default pair of glasses you can wear. Like, if you want glasses at all, you have to buy them. So again, this kind of falls into the same spectrum as every accessory here. Like, ears, tails, mask. You know, they, they are they're not expensive, but... To have them at all you have to pay and that's a little bit of a bummer like i said in the beginning of the video they should have at least like three to five options maybe a little less for the accessories hell if they even had like one pair of glasses i would be happy because the character i made actually does wear glasses but i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't give her glasses so i may have to pick up a pair for her probably this one but that's neither here nor there Next we have horns, and personally I think the best horns are horn 7, and then the other ones are kind of just like... This looks like freaking... Oh god, what's his name? Illidan Stormrage horns from freaking WoW. I wouldn't give that to a waifu. These look kind of cool, I guess. But point being, like, I, I guess yeah, horns are cool, but I'm not, like, in the market for buying them for my character personally. Because there's no real, like, Crescent Moon Oni horn here, which is a missed opportunity. But I do like these tiny horns. They're super cute. They remind me of like DBZ ogres. And then we have tattoos. Again, these are just a bunch of small like microtransactions with... There's a lot of them, but they're just tiny things to kind of fine-tune your character. Next is emotes. Emotes are the same thing. They're not super expensive. They're 400 each. Just pick the emote you want and go about your life. Now, mounts. Mounts are the other costly things, so let's talk about them. You do have a stamina bar. When your character runs, she will get, like, exhausted in the overworld. So I guess a mount would rectify that. I don't know. I don't have one. But at 10 bucks a mount, I mean, if you want one, just grab one. Again, it's just kind of like a lot of tiny transactions. And I can't call it scummy because it's just up to the person buying to have self-control. They come in here, they go, oh, I want one mount, I want a skin, and then they spend 20 bucks, and then they're totally happy with their maiden. The only other thing here that I'd say people may want are the pets so that they can loot for you, but the game's single player, so it's not like Black Desert where you're in like multiplayer areas where you have to have pets looting for you to keep up. This is just you running around solo, so... For the current state of the game, I don't really see a pet as being super mandatory. Just loot your damn self. Like, I've, I've played Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst for 20 years, and I've never had an issue with the game being super old and me having to walk up to the loot manually and pick it up. It's really not that big of a deal. It's You're playing a video game at that point. You don't need that much convenience. You could pick up your damn loot. Either way, that little rant aside... Pets are 10 bucks as well, so you either get a bat or an eagle, but I think the bat's the best boy. 
and then you go about your life, if you even get a pet at all. Now, if the game added multiplayer in the future, and sp having, like, speedy team comps becomes a thing, which it will in most games, especially, like, an RPG setting like this, then, yeah, having a pet may become kind of pseudo-mandatory, because you don't want to hold the party up by constantly looting, you want to keep up with the group and move fast. But for the current state of the game in single player, like, yeah, the pet's not really needed. And then finally we have the miscellanea. So this one's had the biggest complaints, specifically the nude codes. So, basically these are the most costly things here. Honestly, unless you want giant, like, back-breaking balloons, you don't really need the breast cheat. Like, me personally, I think you can make them over the top without it. Same with the size cheat code. Like, I don't really see a point in getting it, and I picked the tank class. So, I'm just happy I could be a giantess at all. I'm not really worried about making her more giant, because she's already giant. Miscellaneous cheat codes add, like, animations to weapons, so it's the same thing. It's like, I don't really need this, especially at the price point. The new codes, I could say, like, I guess are worth getting, but all they really do is allow you to walk around nude, like, at all times. And outside of that, you don't really need them. Yeah, I get it, the game is like, oh, we're trying to be super sexy and NSFW at every turn, but you don't really need nudity to do that. Like, I play Action Time and there's no nudity there, and the game is quite pleasing to look at without any nudity. And the skins in this game leave so little to the imagination, and there's so many, you're going to find something that makes you happy, whether your character's nude or not, you're really going to see a whole lot of her. So... I don't think the new codes are mandatory, I don't feel like it's a paywall, because a paywall is something that would block your progression. Saying a $30 nude code is a paywall is silly. If you want to look at nudity, go online and look up porn, it's free. This is not a paywall, it's just you want to see your character naked. So, a paywall would be something like a gotcha, for example, that stops you from getting the item you want, that's a paywall that pretty much generates currency. This is a one-time payment, and once it's paid, the devs will never get another penny from you on the subject. So it's not even a money generator in that sense, it's just, oh, pay this one-time fee, and then you have what you want, and there you go. Looking at the next page, we do have extended storage. I actually didn't purchase this, it just came with the Ultimate Edition because I wanted a couple of the skins from that. And the Shower Pack. So. The shower pack actually comes when you have Maiden Plus, so if you want the shower pack, don't buy it, just get Maiden's Plus. It's $9.99 a month on their Patreon, and then you have this, and with the shower pack, you can see your character nude in the shower whenever you want. So, that kind of negates the need for this pack, in a sense, because if you want to see her nude, just go to the shower, let her take a bath, or what have you. Now, if you're looking to play completely in the nude at all times, then yes, you will need your nude code. But, the shower allows nudity in that space. So that's pretty much been the entire cash shop. So next we're gonna... ...look at the actual diamonds. So, let me get over to them. Okay. So we have the diamonds. And we have the premium. Premium... I made the mistake of getting 30 days and then realized the Maiden Plus was a thing. I don't feel like Maiden Plus is super advertised, or maybe it's just me being super new to the game, because the game's been in closed alpha for so long. But do not buy premium here. If you get a Maiden Plus subscription, it'll just give you premium for as long as you have Maiden's Plus, and you get way more perks than what these offer. So I definitely, like, PSA, do not buy premium days. If you want to sub, just go to their Patreon and become a patron, and that's it. You'll get everything that premium would give you, plus a lot more, without the need to actually buy it. So, moving on from the premium subscriptions, we come to the actual gems. So, as I said, two, like, ten bucks is sixteen hundred, which is easily a skin it's actually 2000 and now these gym prices just like 
not well rather the gym amounts not the prices but as the price goes up they just ramp up with like no rhyme or reason for double the money of 999 you go from 2000 to 5000 which is like great value and then from 1999 to 30 you jump from 5 to 10000 and then it just keeps ramping up so if you were to drop a hundred dollars you'd get 50,000 gems and you could buy so much of the store with that someone did the math and said that i think it costs roughly 800 bucks to buy every single thing but there's really no need for that that's what i wanted to make this video for i wanted to kind of show you guys what's there talk about the pricing i don't think it's over the top it is a lot of small microtransactions but if you're just frugal and you make a character like, say you like making more than one characters because you come from World of Warcraft where alts are permanent. Then you just make a character, work on her, I don't know, put 20, 30 bucks on the game, dollar up, and that's it. You're not really going to need to buy anything more for her unless you decide you're unsatisfied with the skin that you purchased. Which, that falls down to you as the consumer. You should know that if you buy something, whether, you know, how long it's going to be great to you. Personally, I like to buy things that I never take off, so I like, you know, when I get skins, it's like, okay, yeah. For example, um, Shiranui's wedding skin in Action Time and in, I got it because I know it's something I'd always like to wear. I may not wear it all the time, but it's there for when I want to wear it. So try to get skins that kind of equal out to that for you in League of Maidens, something that you know you'll always like to look at. And outside of the gem prices which I don't think are really extravagant, especially coming from gacha games. You spend way more for gems. Like, I think 8,000 gems in Honkai is $100. Here, it's 30. And then $100 is 50,000. And then, I mean, if you're really looking to go crazy, you can get 100,000 for less than double $100. And then for $340, you could get 200,000. And it just ramps up. Like, but... I wouldn't spend this much in one sitting. That's like crazy whale stuff. Point being like, if you're willing to put like 20 to 30 bucks in the game, you could get a decent amount of stuff. You could probably get a skin, get a mount, get a couple accessories, and then go on, go on about your day and be pretty satisfied as a buying player. So, again, do not buy premium. I just want to get that out there. Unless you're like against the whole system that Patreon offers. If you do not like Patreon, then that's when premium comes into play. Because it's a nice alternative while not giving you as much. Because a patron would need to get more since they're literally directly sub to the developers. But, yeah, premium for someone who just likes to like, you know, subscribe through Steam. This is great. This is something that's definitely worthwhile. And I think that'll be the video. Like, it's nice that they have alternatives. It's nice, you know, that things aren't super expensive. I think you guys who are, like, complaining about it just need to take a step back and realize, whoa, this isn't that bad. Like, trust me, you guys spend, like, a week or two in action timing and you'll come back to League of Maidens kissing the developer's feet because you'll realize, oh, this isn't bad at all. These skins, skins don't give stats, the weapons don't give stats, nothing here gives you any sort of stat or gameplay advantage. Your gameplay progression is all tied to you actually playing and enjoying the game, which is what most people want nowadays. For me, like, I play a lot of gacha games, as I've said multiple times, so I hate having to, like, prepare for banners and roll, and then if I don't get what I want, all my plans are ruined. And then you kind of stagnate as far as your progression and you don't get stronger unless you get the new item. This game is just farming the game and getting the items you need that way. And then you can actually get cosmetics from gameplay. So people kind of shunning the game right away is just really disappointing. Because, yeah, at, at, the game kind of throws microtransactions in your face at first and says, hey, buy this. But if you actually pop the game open and start playing it... You can earn cosmetics free and you won't really ever need to mess with the costume shop unless there's something you really want there that's impossible to get in the game. So I've droned on for a while. I just wanted to kind of speak in favor of the shop and sing the praises of the devs because I am happy with the shop because it doesn't ask too much. 
you can definitely go to the shop and be a minimalist. It's the same thing. Like if you go to Walmart and you're not rich, you're not going to spend 600 bucks in one sitting at Walmart. You're going to buy what you need and leave. So think of the League of Maidens shop as Walmart. I guess that's the best way to think of it. Get what you need and get the hell out. So with that, that's going to end our first League of Maidens video. I'm sorry it took so long, but I hope it was informative to anyone wondering about the monetization. If you found it helpful or informative, please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. You guys go ahead. You have a great rest of your day. I hope you're enjoying grinding the game as much as I am. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow with some more videos.